It's roughly 18 months since President Jacob Zuma sent back the Protection of State Information Bill to the National Assembly for reconsideration. Its critics, and there are many, condemn the bill as the secrecy bill. They claim that it is a threat to the fundamental principles of democracy written into the Constitution, that it undermines access to information and freedom of speech. The ANC government, meanwhile, calls the bill a necessary reform of apartheid ELA laws governing the protection of information. Now this is where an organization known as the Right to Know campaign comes in. It is a coalition of nearly 400 civil society organizations and community groups. One of its organizers, Vainola Makan, is here with us today. Hello, my name is Linda Fegisi and this is the journalist show, Mekong. I joined the Right to Know campaign because I, um, I like to work in social movements where I can make a difference and uh, in this social movement uh, I found that they were doing things close to my heart which is um, fighting against corruption, um, standing for transparency and making sure that there's no secrets um, in government and that there's an open society and I thought Having worked with grassroots communities for a long time, I thought that this is a place to further the, the right um, to access to information of grassroots people with which I've been working for the past 20 years. So how come does the right to know have so many organizations that are supporting it? You, you mm. must have struck a nerve. <laughs> um, I think it's because we have taken up an issue when we campaigned against the, um, the secrecy bill where governments um, basically use that bill as a permission to disclose things, to keep things from people that it is supposed to be in the public interest and in, in public space and we feel that um, there's a risk here of our constitutional gains and um, the, the gains that we made through our democratic anti-apartheid struggle um, that could easily have been reversed just in a couple of years um, what people have fought for for more than 20, 30 years and, and, and that is why we needed to stop that bill from being passed in the form that it was and um, I think that a lot of organizations even if they work on sanitation or on women's rights or on um, housing issues they felt at some point this, they, they get stuck around access to information and that is the w when they see and the right to know is the person organization now that can assist them in unblocking some of the information that is being kept secret and that's why no matter what the core business of every organization is access to information at some point become a priority for each organization and that is why we have such a lot of support we because we do take up issues that really go to the nerve um, of democratic accountability in our country okay uh, you, you mentioned the struggle against apartheid it's been a little over 20 years since our country has been democratic. I, I was two at the time. <laughs> and you'd think that after so long, shouldn't we have reached a reasonable agreement on what South African human rights are mm -hmm. or sh have an idea of what they are supposed to be? Yeah, I think we do have a, fairly, a fair agreement of what those rights are. It is enshrined in our constitution, in the Bill of Rights. Um, the problem is that those rights are paper rights, it is not in practice and so the enforcement of those rights are what we're struggling now with. We have fought very hard to put in those beautiful words, socio-economic rights clauses, making sure that um, everybody has a right to safety and security um, and also the, the um, equality clauses. So we really have a, a constitution to die for, um, but it is the implementation of that, that uh, constitution that is now our problem. So our human rights now must become real. And that is what we struggle for now. So would you say that implementation is the single biggest obstacle to full democratic rights in the country? Or is um, it something else? Well, it's, it's, it's implementation, but there's also the, the enabling environment, which means that we need political will from, those, from the powers that be, firstly. We need the... Um, the necessary resources 
and we need those um, policy um, implementers to be fully trained and fully capacitated to, to ensure that what they are have been employed to do um, to, to deliver on that. And also we need an active uh, participation by our citizens to keep every department, every agency that has to do with our, our socio-economic rights to keep them accountable. And so we cannot just rely on the officials. There needs to be a balance between participation um, by the community themselves as well as the, um, the, the necessary drive and capacity and power of those who are tasked to, to deliver on those human rights. Okay. So Vainola, here are four names. Jimmy Mushala, mm -hmm. Mrs. M, Soli Chitangano, and Im Imram Ishmael Mukadam, right. all whistleblowers. Right. All people who have exposed illegal and dishonest activity in our society. Yeah. So the right to know helps people like these. And yeah. I, I'd really like to know what is their best defense in court? Mm. The whistleblower. whistleblower is one of the areas that needs quite a lot of work. We do have the public um, um, disclosure uh, protection of the Disclosure Act which which has been uh, put there in order to protect whistleblowers there is quite a number of weaknesses in the act um, because it is it is only um, as that the act only cover employees when you are an, an employee at the moment but as the environment um, the, there needs to be a code of good practice to make sure that 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 act actually um, is implemented properly that there need to be clear guidelines for any agency and they also need to be a pr protection and support for the whistleblowers themselves which which we find is very weak within organizations as well as within government or private sector and there's also what makes it worse is there is now also a culture whereas before in the anti-apartheid struggle we had a culture of strong accountability strong transparency um, strong democracy now we have a culture of secrecy a culture of corruption where where that is all almost being san sanctioned and so it, it has become okay and so within that culture it is very difficult for people to blow the whistle their uh, very lives are at stake they can lose their jobs um, there is impact on their families because they are disoriented this social psychological impact on them and um, yeah they, they fear the their very future and the quality of their lives and uh, Unless we put also clear support mechanisms in place for whistleblowers, we will find that, that these are the, the big heroes and those are the really courageous people. But we want ordinary people, everybody that see corruption, live with corruption, um, has, um, has to do with corruption and the wrongdoing and see the irregularities that are happening. We want them to speak out at every level of society. We don't just want us to have our heroes that has this extraordinary courage. We want this to become the culture. Um, and so there is still a lot of uh, work to do. We, we are advocating for a shift in the policy to expand the, um, that act and to make sure that that is comprehensive enough to ensure the proper protection of whistleblowers and to create an enabling environment for people to speak out. You, you said that secrecy has been sanctioned, right? Please explain that, how is this been yeah. in this society? Well, we find, well, the fact that, that the government in the first place wanted to, to pass the secrecy bill, um, that um, why, why there's, in, in any society, why there's a move towards more secrecy means that there is stuff that, that they want to hide. For example, they want to hide either corruption, there's some tender transactions that's going wrong, or it's going to some people that we know in govern, um, government, our friends, or um, there's, there is um, some irregularities or weaknesses in the implementation that they want to cover up. And so, and so that, that transparency and accountability is now hampered. And so when, when the government becomes lax on those issues, that is the time that they now start to cover up things and the secrecy, pr actively promoting secrecy. And we can see it in parliament, in government, in our agencies where, where our senior leaders refuse to answer questions that are posed to them by parliamentarians, um, that, that there are intimidation and ostracization of those people 
who do challenge them and the brutal attack um, sometimes by police on those organizations or agents uh, actively being targeted by surveillance agencies of government and so instead of the state security agencies protecting our citizens they become now agents of um, covering up some of these things that happen in government and and that we want to reverse as far as possible what do you think will happen in south africa when the bill is passed when the bill is passed um, Firstly, the media will not be able to get access to information and put it in the public domain. We, we rely on our media at the moment because our, um, the, the academic community, they will do research, but that takes very long. The media is, is our agency that really quickly put information in the public space because tomorrow it's on TV, it's on the newspaper, it's on the radio, and people interact with either one of those at least twice a week. And so um, that will first happen. The media will there be a cl clamp down on the media. There will be imprisonment of people that disclose information be because the bill will enable that now. Uh, up to 10 to 25 years imprisonment by people who, who make uh, inf classified information available to the public, either through the media or through leakage. And um, we will also see a fast reversal, like I said earlier, uh, to our constitutional rights that is the cornerstone stone of our democracy at the moment and accountability in our society will, will be accelerate, the reversal of that will accelerate um, very quickly and um, our community will be scared. There will be a sense of fear and not a sense of openness, transparency and a sense that we are part of this government. That, that will be reversed and that will be a sad thing for South Africans who have felt excluded in uh, their own country for so long, who are now have a sense of inclusion, they will go back to that. Okay, lastly, Manola, the 21st of March this month is Human Rights Day. Correct. And it commemorates uh, the 69 people who died in the Charlottesville Police Massacre. Yeah. How is the Right to Know campaign commemorating this day? The Right to Know, um, we actually have decided to have a whole week of commemoration. Um, firstly, we're going to, um, on the 18th of Ma March, we're going to have at uh, Lookout Hill in Kailicha, we have a screening on minor shutdown, which is the video that has been made on the people who lost their lives in the Marikana massacre. And so we want to not just wait for that anniversary of Marikana, but remind people often of what happened in a democratic South Africa if our constitutional uh, rights are being starting to be reversed. So we are going to have the screening and we are inviting all different organizations to come together. And then we are also on Saturday, um, 21st of March, which is actually Human Rights Day, we will mobilize all our communities, all our organizational support organizations to come and join um, pickets at police station with, with our focus on police brutality. Because the police has been the, the agent that is making sure that the, um, the, the state surveillance are being in place, you know, either the threat of police violence or actual police violence and sometimes even people being killed, intimidated, harassed. So we're going to pick it in Delft, we're going to pick it in Kailicha, Site B, and we're going to pick it in Manenburg. And all the adjacent communities will be rallied around those three police stations, which will make sure that we are now saying we are enough, we are tired of the police becoming our enemy instead of protecting us and in instead of uh, make promoting our rights to safety and security. Is there anything you would like to add before we part of Ayola? Um, I would just like to um, wish everybody a um, uh, meaningful Human Rights Day where we can really begin to see that every citizen take responsibility for Human Rights Day um, as a day where we can stand for our children to have their human rights real and not just on paper like we have now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. That was Vainola Makan, organizer of the Right to Know campaign in the Western Cape, Eastern Cape and the Northern Cape. My name is Linda Fekisi and this is the journalist regular show, Mirko.